Welcome everyone to our lesson on bump stops and air bumps. Now this is a pretty simple uh, upgrade, but it's, it's absolutely necessary when changing the height of your suspension and changing your tire size. Tire size, you know, your fenders, if you went from a stock fender configuration to a high line or you separated your fenders like you guys have done here, setting your bumps up to maximize up travel but minimize rubbage or damage to other components is a critical setup uh, portion of your overall suspension. Right, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda go over your first basic and that's gonna be this puck style. Now, the factory has a uh, rubber type isolator on one end and then generally uh, like a pad on the other side. For it to strike against. Right. It's generally like a closed cell polyfoam uh, bump up top, something that's gonna be quiet when it makes contact with the, the mating surface. And all you're doing with these bump stop pads is simply adding them, stacking them on top of each other, bolting them in place. So you are stopping your up travel with the OEM bump stop to either minimize your shocks from going solid or other interference and clearance areas that you're trying to, to avoid having damage. Right, so if you've gone with a longer shock now, um, it'll bottom out sooner. So if you have a smaller, people do this where they have a smaller tire size but a long shock for, for down travel, but the problem is you don't wanna run that shock all the way up and bottom it out. No, you and so we have that in the advanced course showing you exactly what not to do in that situation. Right. But with this, you're gonna simply keep stacking them Yep. until your tire either hits or until you uh, have the shock right before yep. you're gonna go full bottom out yep. on it, right? And in some other instances, you're, not, you're trying not to make a control arm make contact with something or any other mechanical interference that can cause damage prematurely to your vehicle that you don't wanna have, bump stops are critical. So it's pretty much clearance. It, exactly. Cl it's clearance issues. Yep, so all, you're gonna, all, almost all the time. Okay, now, so from here, from stacking them, you can see there's holes there you're gonna run, obviously you just get a longer and longer bolt depending yep. on how many, and you can stack, I mean, three, four, four five, six. I mean, at a certain point you might wanna just get a metal plate and then add, start Absolutely. with one again. <laughs> or start to come down from the top depending, like something like this comes down from the top instead of coming up from the bottom and get the two to meet where, right where you want them to meet. Right, now this is the, uh, this is an upgrade to the factory closed cell foam. Yep. So the factory one is very soft. It doesn't, re doesn't really give you any, um, Absorption. Correct. You pretty much hit it and you, I mean, you feel it in Drive the vehicle when it. you hit it. Um, this one is uh, an upgraded, this one's actually from Metal Cloak, and this is an upgraded, uh, just, I think it's the same closed cell foam. Same type, idea. Same idea, but there's more rigidity yep. to it. You have more give. We have these on our vehicle now, and when I hit them, you feel them, but you feel the vehicle actually slow down, not just smash into them. Yep. And that's that's uh, what these are good for. So you can kind of upgrade both, uh, where you get a little bit more here plus, plus some cushion. Um, but as you start pushing a vehicle a little further um, off-road, and you if you're constantly hitting these bump stops hard, you may look at your spring and shot combo, but there's another weapon here. Uh, an another option to control the you know hard, bottoming of your vehicle or your solid stop is what's called an air bump. You can vary the pressure in the, in the chamber to create a greater force here so it slows your vehicle down. Same as this did, this was a denser uh, foam than the factory one, mm -hmm. so it made it slow it down at a greater, greater rate. This will do the same thing. These come in various uh, sizes. What we have here is a Radflow 2.0 with an inch and a half stroke. You, they vary the stroke they vary the size of the can. So the bigger the can, you go up to a two and a half, then you get um, greater uh, bump stop capacity uh, okay. over the end. You know, and setting these up is also another critical component to your, your overall suspension setup. Right, because I, I would assume if you've got this set up wrong, you come down, you blow through this, this is gonna collapse and hit hard, it, I would it, assume. It, it, it hits hard and it's when you want it to engage in your suspension is also critical because when this is engaging, just as when you're engaging any other bump stop, your spring rate is going up. You know, like you said before, we, we, Kevin and I had some talks on the side about yeah. people's setups. You'll see them with this almost engaging into the, you know, active suspension, like right off the bat. Right, All so that's it's constantly in the bump stop the right. whole time. And making noise and jacking your spring rate and giving you a very, very rough ride for the street. You want this to come into play only when you need it, only towards the, the greater extent of suspension travel. Gotcha, gotcha. Now this is, is this kind of like a secondary shock? Would you kind of like like a, a last a last ditch effort it's your, type it's of? Your, it, absolutely, your bump stops are always your last ditch effort. And you know, whether it be an air cylinder like this one or you know, 
a closed cell polyfoam that's uh, an improvement upon factory, those mm -hmm. are always your latch disc efforts. You're always trying to catch it with your spring and your shock combination first, and then it's, oh Jesus, here's my savior <laughs> at the end. That, that's where you go right, to. Right, because I wouldn't imagine you want to be blowing up, like just hitting this all the time. And then, no. And so with rock crawling, because we do a lot of rock crawling, even though we are going faster now, um, how does that come into play if I'm kind of in a precarious situation and I kind of slide down and hit? Like, is this going to cause the vehicle to like bounce off line or any kind of recoils with that much pressure in no, there? No, and you can set the pressures to your liking, which you can, they have a degree of tunability. Okay. So, you know, which sets the force or the push off of the air bump itself. So you can you will be able to set that when we um, dial in your vehicle. Gotcha. So that's what it all is. So you want to dial in the vehicle always, always, always. So setting up these bump stops, you're well. We don't have anything on our vehicle right now, but once we get the axles and everything back in, we're gonna not have any suspension on it, right? right. We're not gonna have any springs. We're not gonna have any, and we're we're gonna. We're going to push the cycle. axle all the way up. We're going to drop one side while we stuff the yep. other. And that's how you get the clearances. And that's how you set Air these bumps. bump stops. Yep. Um, it's the same thing with these guys, right? So you're going to, the best thing to do is when you're doing your lift and once you, you, you throw the tires, so you no springs, no shocks, you're going to throw the wheels and tires on it and articulate it and find out when the first thing hits and that's where you want to set your bump that, stop. That's right? your initial and then you do want to make sure you put your shocks in though just to make sure you're not going to hard bottom on the shocks before you're using your bump stops because you don't want to just drive through your shocks. Right, that'll you know, blow them out real it, quick, Exactly, right? you'll do some damage to your shocks. So your bump stops are critical for all phases of your suspension setup. Okay, is there, uh, is there much more to know about bump stops other no. than proper setting up? And, no, I mean, and it's, it's all the same thing. It's just the degree of the performance of the bump stop. I mean, these come with uh, some extra cool features that they will have some adjustability built into this. So it's not only just setting the, bo the bottom stop, you know, you can adjust the threaded body of it to move it up and down as well. So okay. if you're not perfect, you have a little bit more forgiveness. Uh -huh. um, all the major manufacturers, Fox, King, Radflow, they all make these adjustable bodied bump stops that help you uh, uh, as a consumer. So you don't have to be 100% perfect. You can dial it in slightly afterwards, even gotcha. if you're not perfect. So, um, and then on this, you'd mentioned it was a one and a half. I'm assuming that's the- That's the stroke. Amount. That's the stroke. So yep. if I got this and say we were like, shoot, we need like two or two and a half for some reason. It, do you, can you, is that something you take apart and do? You, or you, do you, have you to can take them apart. In? There's typically spacers underneath the valve stacks that'll uh -huh. allow it to stretch out further. Okay. Um, you know, typically for your on-road usage, you're gonna see anywhere from a minimum of four and a half inches of compression out of a shock to usable suspension to five and a half, six is a very good, comfortable number. Number. Okay. And, you know, so making sure your typical range is, you know, two and f two, three and four is what you'll see most of these guys. We have Radflow setting these up specially for us because we don't want them to gauge when you're on the road all the time. Right. It would be, it, like you said, it'd jack your spring rates up. And we did have, I forgot to grab these. We'll grab one of these here. Um, this pad here. Yeah. This goes with your, with your bump stop and it's shaped all kind of funky, but that's. Yep. Designed again, just for another, um, on the rear of the, the JK and the JL, mm -hmm. you know, as the axles repositioned, you're not necessarily gonna come up and strike the OEM position well. So now you can actually slide these and tighten them to make sure you're striking the OE pad or an aftermarket pad, mm -hmm. uh, at, you know, and making sure everything is functioning to the, the way you want it to function. Right, so picture this, so this is on the frame, yep. and then this is, as your axle comes up, this is gonna contact here, but the problem is, is as you change things, uh, and that's why this is offset, is that this may strike only a portion of this, and yep. so you would move your bump stop out to actually strike, so you're striking directly dead on. Exactly. But, so this is gonna be fixed, and this is the part that's moving, and what he's talking about is as your axle's moving, you always want to be in the shock and spring, and it's only when you blow past it that you're wanting that to actually hit and stop you. Yep. Um, and, and that's where we go. It's the same, same thing for this guy, right? This yep. guy's gonna same be fixed. Same exact thing and we're gonna make sure that it strikes in the exact location um, and it's only gonna strike after we've made, yep. after we've gone through all of our spring rate, exactly. basically. And when you are setting these up, you do wanna make sure that you go to full compression on your bump tube as checking your interference. Don't just check when it makes contact with these bumps. You know, make sure you compress as much as possible right. so you're checking maximum compression. Right, yeah, because this one, I, I have seen, I have seen this where people are like, oh, you know, I keep rubbing and I, you know, I set up my bump stops and they'll send me a picture of, of it literally doing this, just, just touching. Right. Well, 
all of this still collapses. So there's still that much more travel to be had, um, which if you look at this, you have another at least two pucks to go. Right, two inches. You have another two inches to go before you actually stop. Um, so you're not, you're not just raising the axle up to check for when it barely touches. You wanna, when it touches, now you need to measure the rest of the distance here, the, the collapsible distance. Yep. And make sure you are mating, you know, at full compression, you know, these two surfaces correctly because you can tear these up, you know, especially the OEM ones or uh -huh. the aftermarket ones. They are a closed cell fo uh, foam. They're a lot softer than this for sure. R right. Th think of a sponge. You know, if you're rubbing a sponge on a metal edge, it's just going to tear itself apart. Mm. Make sure it's mating to a nice surface. Exactly. All right. Well, I mean, it's pretty simple on, on setting this up and what you need to do to measure it. It takes yep. a little bit of time, yep. but it's not anything that's that difficult. It's really you and a friend can do it. Absolutely. Um, just an extra hand. So, um, and we'll go over that in the advanced course as well. Right. So we do have that in the advanced yep. course on how to actually set this up and what, how it actually looks. So head on over to the advanced course. Yep. If you want to learn more about that, um, or if you want to just pay someone like this guy. Right. <laughs>